Today I want to take a serious look at the question of truth. Um, obviously this uh, matters a great deal, not just to Christians, but to all right-thinking people. What is true and what isn't true, particularly as we're thinking about uh, the dramatic effect of the virus and lockdown on our world. Interestingly, um, many governments, including our own here in Great Britain, uh, which I'm most familiar with, of course, uh, many governments have described these times as a war on the virus. Uh, I've heard it used by a number of governments in recent months. Years ago, I, I read this statement about war. The first rule of war, governments lie and young men die. Interesting observation, actually, because in this war, Young people haven't really died in very large numbers. It's targeted older people. But we do know that given the fact that governments were in a pretty tricky position as this started, not knowing what to do with this new virus, uh, and then they established a course of action, that given that they were afraid, understandably, and wanted to control populations in various ways, you can see that as time goes on, there'll be a danger of just sticking to a particular pattern of activity uh, and the truth uh, begins to get a bit obscured as time goes by. So we want to think about how we find out what the truth is about the virus, and that's going to be very difficult. But at least it's worth the attempt, and it's certainly worth the attempt for Christians because truth matters to us. We follow someone who claimed to be the way, the truth and the life and who established himself as the truth. Uh, in our reading today, in uh, John's Gospel, in chapter 18, we see Jesus in front of Pilate. It's a crucial time in the Gospel story. Jesus is about to be condemned to death by an authority which he recognises from a human point of view, but which he claims would have no authority had God not given it to them. His uh, main prosecutors are a king called Herod and a character in this story, Pontius Pilate. John 18, 37 says, this is Pilate speaking, You're a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, you're right in saying I'm a king. In fact, for this reason I was born and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. What is truth? Pilate asked. With this, he went out. Now, interesting, he goes out to talk to the Jewish leaders. It's interesting that he doesn't hang around for the answer to what is truth. Now, this matters, of course, because Christian faith hangs on this. If Jesus isn't the Son of God, if our message isn't true, then it's completely meaningless and should be abandoned. But if it is true, then of course it should be embraced and followed because it's the wonderful offer of salvation to everyone on the planet. So what is true? A few hundred years ago, authority figures in society probably came, in the main, from the church and its uh, um, linked organisations. And so priests and religious leaders had great authority. Obviously, in secular society, that authority is greatly diminished and the mantle of authority has been taken on by scientists. Uh, science has become uh, a much greater authority than religious belief is in our contemporary world. But there's a danger with this, and we ought to think about it for a few moments this morning. Uh, so the vlog's going to take a little longer than it might uh, sometimes take because I want us to pray for our governments because they're in a very difficult position and to pray for ourselves that the Holy Spirit will give us real wisdom in discerning the difference between truth and a lie or a fudge of the truth. See, if these high priests of science who've taken over in secular society from the high priests of religion... Um, if they're to be quoted as the authorities, we ought to examine carefully what is being claimed for them. Now, we know that guided by the science, this great phrase we've talked about before, um, it is simply not defendable. Uh, I've spoken to lots of senior medics and read their work all over the world. They have a completely different view from scientists who are advising, for example, the British government. 
So if that's the case, uh, then clearly there's not the science at all, but a range of scientific views and uh, opinions. Uh, and we know that particularly, say, the British government is not necessarily following the science robustly uh, because there's all sorts of different views of the science for the decisions they're making. So, for example, um, they've recently insisted on a quarantine for travellers uh, coming back to the UK when the science, the science they affirmed earlier in the pandemic, when they said you don't need to do this quarantining thing, and the world Health authorities, scientists say you don't need to do this at the end of a pandemic. You should only do it at the beginning for maximum effect. So we seem to be doing quarantining despite the science. And what about the two metre rule? World Health Authority say one metre. Other countries have said other measurements. Which science are we actually following if we say we should be two metres apart from one another? Uh, and then the recent insistence on masks. In fact, you're going to get fined if you don't wear one on public transport. It's very unclear what the science says about all of that. We know, as a matter of fact, that viruses are very, 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 very small. And the pores in most masks are simply not finely tuned enough to keep all those viruses out. So... Whether it's actually going to protect us a little, a lot, the jury's out. So it's very unclear whether following the science is the truth about what's really happening. It's a danger too, of course, because uh, not only uh, are you looking at one thing, a virus, but you're looking at the wider implications. And so when scientists ask lots of questions... Um, that aren't followed by the government uh, and they don't even seem to be acknowledged and questioned, you have to wonder why people are so afraid to consider evidence beyond that in front of them. Earlier this week, um, scientists published a paper from Bristol University suggesting that um, the virus was in retreat five days before the lockdown was even instigated. If that's true, it means that informal social distancing worked and the lockdown may have increased the rate of the virus disappearing, but its harshness might have been avoided, which is what the Swedes have been saying all along and which the Norwegian government have recently said about their own lockdown. So these things may not be true or they may be true, but if we're searching for the truth, surely we want people in the public, political realm, to at least acknowledge that there are different views here. How else will we get to the truth? How else will we find out whether lockdown really is worth the effort? We know that it's killing people in the developing world already, and we know that it's causing horrendous problems in the UK, largely unreported and hidden, day by day. The absence of medical help in hospitals for a whole range of people. We know that this is happening. So surely, if there's a way to avoid the horror of that, to get the NHS open, to get us back into the freedoms we've enjoyed, if there's a way to do that quickly, surely we'd want to. And so it's very incumbent on Christians to pray for governments, to have their eyes wide open, to examine all the scientific views and to think carefully about what they're doing and what's happening. Not simply to go ploughing on on a course of action just because they've started on that course of action. So today, with all the questions swirling around, and remember it's hard to get to truth because how do we find information? Mostly through the media. And don't think the media is unbiased in this, looking for objective truth. Vast amounts of the media, social and print media and internet and televised media, are very keen indeed to keep this thing going. That's why there are so many stories about the risk of a second wave and, and trying to keep us panic-stricken. It's what the media loves, a good crisis. So we have to see beyond all that. So let's pray for governments. Let's pray for wisdom. Let's pray for a commitment to truth to find out what the truth is in all this melee of information and the mess we're surrounded by. This really matters, because with the lockdown continuing, every day that goes by, people are in pain. 
people are dying, people are struggling, people are getting to their wits end. So finding the truth and what it is matters. I don't claim for a minute to know the answers to these things. Simply a hunger and a desire to see the pain which people are feeling from lockdown dealt with. And so we desperately need facts and truth in the political realm, in the media realm, in the social and cultural realm of our lives. And we need to pray to this Jesus, who is the truth, who came to bring truth, and pray that he will intervene in our world to make truth and righteousness lifted up and honoured. Our governments all over the world have a very, very difficult task. Easy to criticise them, always. But let's pray for a new passion for truthfulness so that we can find our way back to more and more human flourishing and the absence of pain and struggle for so many. So let's commit ourselves as Christians to pray today for truth to reign.